Bill, have you got your concern face on? Yeah. All right, so we're here working on Phil's Big Plymouth, and Phil's come up for a visit. The first time he's got out in quite a while, so he had a little bit of things he wanted to do to this thing, take it over, so we're working our way through. So uh, here's an interesting one for you. I was going to adjust the transmission, what people commonly refer to as the kick down, but it's actually the throttle control linkage to the transmission. Tells it when to shift and all that good stuff. And uh, so there's the upper part of it where it comes up to the trans, uh, the uh, carburetor rather. And a couple things are going on. I noticed it was hanging up. When I was trying to mess with this thing, it was binding on something and it's hitting the speedometer or the throttle cable right there. I don't know why that thing ended up under it like that position there. That kind of no, no bueno, but so I was looking at that, but this thing was, uh, you push it and it just barely come back real slow. You know, and it's supposed to be spring loaded, which it is spring loaded, but it's not supposed to be gummy like that. So I went ahead and just took the whole thing out down in there, the rest of it. You've got, oh, you've got a thing here. It's kind of oriented like this. This is the part that goes to that part you just saw. It's got a little joint in it, and then it's got a, this goes onto a stud on the transmission, and then this guy back here, sorry for this camera craziness, but kind of is positioned sort of like this, roughly goes back to the transmission. So when you push down on this, it pushes this bottom one rearward. If anybody that works on port flights is kind of familiar with that. So I got it disconnected up top and disconnected up bottom, and it was still gummy wouldn't move very well and so it wasn't binding up on the pivot here I could establish that no problems there and uh, so that only left something in the linkage itself so we got looking at this and there's some kind of goo here that is deposited itself on this throttle rod and went right down into the joint right here you can see the sun's that kind of out. Can't really see, but you can see it got right in there. Just gummed it all up. So we're trying to figure out what in the world, what in the world ran out on this thing and where did it come from. So, sure enough, <sighs> looking under here, and if you look at the bottom of the wiper motor, there's a hose right in the way. Helpfully. I'll get my light maybe I can position it a little bit for you. It's the world's best light here. Still can't get it to go where it needs it to be. But anyway, I don't get that out of the way. But kind of carefully look, there's a, a deposit of goo on the bottom of the wiper motor. So the wiper motor has melted out. Something the entire inside of it has melted, like potting compound or something. So Phil's already already ready to buy a new wiper motor for it since he done like that. And the only problem I have, I don't have a problem with it melting because I've seen a lot of stuff on these cars melt out for no apparent reason and they still work. But that's up to him if he wants to put a motor on it. But the only thing I'm concerned about is that is if it doesn't replace it, I don't know how much more goo is in there and it may melt back out on this again because this won't necessarily cause a problem because... It's going to move. When you push the accelerator, it's going to move, but it doesn't return very fast. So what happens is, is it makes the, if it hangs up in the wrong spot, it's going to make the, until it gets back to its home position, or if it hung up, then it's going to make the shifting timing be inconsistent and kind of weird. So he's already said it's kind of weird. So we're going to work, get this thing cleaned up. We're going to take it in there in the parts washer and clean it all up and, and fix it up for him and put it back on and adjust the transmission end of it and go from there. But I thought this was a this was an interesting thing to see. I never would have expected that. I thought maybe it just was rusted up, but that's not the case. So Phil's gonna obsess over that now for a while. But uh the only other things we did, you know, you may recall uh that this car lost a transmission about a year and a half ago. And so Phil back this early summer got the transmission replaced he did it all by himself did a good job on it but it turned out it had a little bit of a leak which it was the one seal that he didn't replace and i didn't think to remind him but it's a dipstick tube seal it's just a little o-ring it's just stripping some fluid out of it 
and we uh, readjusted the front end, the torsion bars on it. But otherwise, it's been doing just fine, so everybody's happy, especially Phil. Good to see you again, bud. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, we're going to continue on with this, and uh, see you on the next one. What's going on up there, Phil? I saw you looking I'm up. I'm just looking up there at this guy. Yeah, we're... Well, <sighs> today, one of our things, our objectives at the end of the day was to go to the local car show they have on the square. But, you know, if there's things things on a list to hate about living in the South, it's the weather. The weather is fine during the week when everybody's working. Then when we're going to go do something on the weekend, it turns to, you know what? But we'll see. Staying off to the west right now, but hopefully we'll get to go. That's what we're trying. All right, guys. Yeah, check it out. Get on in there, Phil. What, what goes in that? That's the spring goes there, spring anchor. And there ain't a spring? It's in there. It just fell off on the ground. Oh. Yeah, work it. Work it a little bit. See what gummy. you. Yeah, how about the other one? Try the other one. Well, this not right here. That's Try working. I'm looking. See? Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's nice and gummy. Yeah. It's not supposed to be gummy. How could you not notice that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You like know I what? Said, I only had 30 days for that transmission to get it in, drive it. If it wasn't good, pull it back out, put it in the box, yeah. mail it in. And ship it back to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Is that where it came from? Yep. It came from Mexico. Are you serious? I'm serious as a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe it's the same one that came out. Big old 18-wheeler brought it in. Okay. Well, I didn't know that. But no yeah. problem there. Hey, that's fun. But, uh, uh, yeah, Phil had to go through. Uh, I guess I should talk about that a little bit. Phil had to go through all kinds of hoops to get this transmission, and it came out of a car just like this one, thankfully. Yep. But initially, while he was looking for a transmission, there was some confusion on his end. I was not asked what kind of transmission was in it, and so they were looking for the wrong transmission for who knows how long. They were looking for a 727, which is not the transmission that's in this. It's a 904. So once they... Phil realized that it's a 904, then that seemed to speed things up real quick on mm -hmm. finding a transmission for it. So, anyway, they got it in. It seems to work fine. I haven't driven it, but we'll, we'll take it for a drive. I'm sure it's doing good, though. He's, uh, all right, Phil, I got you on camera. I'm going to make you I'm gonna make you own up to something else. You just told me about the brakes. So. Well, so Phil went to the parts. Phil had to have brakes on the front front brakes. Oh, no. Yes, you're going to own up to this. So continuing his pattern of never calling the person that would know the answer immediately to it, never ever doing that. So he didn't didn't ask. So he goes into the parts store and what you ask for for the front brakes? Shoes. Brake shoes. 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 Because. You don't make them for the front. I know, but you did, You had to argue with the guy, right? Yeah. And so Phil was convinced, had convinced himself that he was going to buy front brake shoes for this car. You know, it doesn't have front brake shoes. It has brake pads. So he takes them home. They're not what goes on it. So he has to hit, get back in the car, go all back to the parts store, go in, tell the guy that the guy was right and Phil was wrong, and get the right parts and go back home, right? Yep. You didn't want to just ask him what's on the front? I mean, let's nope. let's unpack this a little bit, Phil. Why would you be confronted with someone telling you that there's disc brake shoes on the front but pads, and you still refuse to believe him? Yep. See, that's what we're getting into with society <laughs> these days. It's like if you're confronted with a true statement, what's the first damn thing a person ought to do? Argue with them and say it can't be true. Is that right? No. <laughs> <laughs> If I go to, like, if I called three or four parts stores and asked for front whatever, things that make it stop on the front of this car, and they all tell me that it takes brake pads, I don't know about anybody else, but you know what I'm going to think? I'm going to think, well, it's a 99.9% .9 chance it takes brake pads. <laughs> <laughs> well, I should have took the wheel off. 
and checked, but I didn't. Yeah, he was <laughs> no car. It was when I was well, driving it. I heard metal against metal. I will. I will give you a, a partial credit on this, and that is that the car that you had before this had drum brakes on the front, but. This one doesn't. They got last year for drum brakes on any kind it was of motor. Only one year difference. No, it wasn't. What was it? Your old car was a '73. This is an '87. It's 14 oh. years difference. Oh. So they quit using drum brakes on cars on the front. Mopar did in 1975. Oh. I think it was. I think that was the last year. And then everything after that, no matter what it was, had disc on the front. Oh. So now you know. So now we know. we can't rag you too and so bad. So does everybody else. <laughs> that's true that's true that's true so yeah that's all right yep it, i'll see him at the junkyard and i'll i'll, I'll hide <laughs> if it's true it can't be true right right if it's a true fact it can't be true it has to be wrong it's a lie yeah no. okay all right we'll let you off the hook we'll get you off the hot seat now phil we'll all go ahead right. and clean your parts that's up cool. for you Anyway, I'm glad to have Phil up. Phil's been, uh, uh, you know, with everything going on, Phil decided his age and his pre-existing health concerns that he did not need to be out being exposed too much to stuff. So he, he's been chilling for about the past year or so, and I don't blame him. So I think yeah, we're all... I don't want to give anybody this crap. Yeah, don't say the word. We can't say the word. But, uh, mm. yeah, so I think Phil actually... Uh, let's just just kind of vaguely say it. Phil came down with some sickness at least once, so he's he's been over that and got his you know what's, and I've got my you know what's good to go now. So we're all happy. Everybody's yep. good. And he's out on the road again, Phil. Yeah, on the road again. The old Plymouth back hitting the well, highway. They just make something for backs and knees. I would be all set. Oh, they do. It's called a check into the hospital and a surgical yeah, knife. Yeah, and that ain't going to happen. He don't want to do that. No, I don't want to do that. Phil's, People go in there and they don't come back out for some reason. Yeah, Phil's, Phil's, Phil's kind of getting to the age he's kind of worried about a lot of stuff these days, but I can't I can't blame him. I would be too. All right, guys, we're going to go. I feel like I'm going to go in here and work on this thing. So See ya. See you, Phil. See ya. Ow. Wire wheel. <laughs> you want to put it in the? You want to try putting it in the grinder then, the wire wheel on the grinder? Uh, you want to try the wire wheel? I might have to want this one spot. <laughs> what happened? Shut it out. Darn it. Why are you You gotta put some pressure on it. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do, boss. I don't know how to do when you got a knot flap. Uh, a what that? A hand that 
No. That stuff's good for that. Huh? That solution in there is good for that. It makes me drop shit and because I can't, uh, I have no feeling in it. Yeah. About got it? No, nope, not yet. Okay, well, if it's going to be easier to put in the grinder, just we'll dry it off and put it in the grinder. Man, peel it right off with the damn fingers, but you do it with a brush, you can't use it. You want a scraper? Tell me what you need, Phil. What do you need? You got a whole two two boxes yeah. just directly to your right side of there. I give, there. Give, no, but give me a signal. I'll tell you where it's at. What do you need? Tell me. Tell me. Uh, speak it out. Tell me what it is. Help me understand. Yeah. Give. Uh, uh, watch me digger. What the uh, heck is that? What? A watchman jigger. Uh, scraper. Okay, go to that far toolbox. Look in the top drawer. That's a scraper. Yeah. That red one's a scraper. That's a, well, sure. Okay, great. Some left on the outside there. Huh? There. Hey, right, let's just put that in the grinder. I do that. Don't worry yourself out. You can't get off of that. We'll just move on. I thought it would kind of dissolve that, but. Yeah. It ain't. All right. Yeah. Shut that thing off. We'll go to the grinder then. Yeah.